So, David, first released an update on their traffic light protocol. Yeah, Jim. So, yeah, uh, as you mentioned, it's been uh, about five years since they've uh, released the uh, last uh, version of it. So there was version 1.0. Now it's version 2.0. So as you say, it's been this is the five years since it's been uh, the release of 1.0. Traffic light protocol is kind of interesting because it's kind of a unique name in the way it's worded, right? So you, you, it makes you kind of think when you first read traffic light protocol, you're thinking, you know, protocol. We've got, you know, HTTP, many different protocols, SMTP, but this one's kind of unique in the fact of what it is. So as you said, first, it's the uh, form of incident response and security teams. Um, this particular version was, or the traffic light protocol was um, introduced back in like 1999. Uh, so it's been around for almost about 20 years. Let's start out in uh, the UK's, uh, you know, National Information uh, Security Coordination Center. I think it's the CPNI now, but uh, yeah. So basically, they released that new version, version two. So kind of what this is is actually it's kind of unique to me as well, or, or kind of interesting. Like I mentioned, is um, this particular traffic light protocol, or what they call TLP. We'll, we'll use TLP in the discussion. Um, is used as I mentioned by uh, you know your incident response teams, your C certs um, to facilitate you know, sharing of information or, or sensitive information and allow allows for greater collaboration of that. So um, basically, the source of the information will define uh, limitations or put some boundaries um, that recipients must follow or should follow when they're receiving the information from that source. And so, you know, like I said, this applies kind of to more sensitive information. It could apply to anything, but, you know, you normally you would tell it to a sensitive type information or document or whether it's a presentation or an email. And by giving those labels or classifications to the data, um, that's how the source can, you know, uh, let the recipients in the particular discussion or in the meeting uh, know how uh, sensitive this information is and what levels or how far it should be disseminated. So uh, one of the primary reasons that this update was done was basically to uh, give it an easier adoption of the protocol, uh, a better readability, um, and more for um, you know person-to-person -person sharing. So uh, and the reason why it's called traffic light protocol, one reason why is because traffic lights are pretty much universal around the world, so most people can identify that in the community. So again, though this particular TLP or traffic light protocol, even though it's we're tailoring to our security discussion, it could be used for anyone really. I mean, if they see fit, granted, it could go into the medical world or any of the things. So the update um, to this protocol, going from version 1.0 to 2, um, basically added a, it changed one of the labeling. So before there was a labeling called TLP white, which is kind of a generic uh, labeling for all information. They've changed that from white to clear and then on the version before 1.0, there was a TLP Amber. And what they did, they took the TLP Amber and added a strict category. So it's considered TLP Amber plus strict. And that particular label classification now says it's only for organizations only. So once the source provides you that information, you would distrib distribute that information or disseminate it to uh, anyone within your organization on this new strict label, whereas the TLP Amber is... Um, your organizations plus any clients you may have um, that that information needs to be disseminated to. So again, those are kind of the two main ones that this particular uh, protocol changed or made changes to. And then again, uh, more just again for readability. And the third one that they did was they added color tables. So they kind of define a color uh, code value. So if you're going to put it like in a document, in an email, or even on a website, let's say, um, they have like an RGB value, your CMYK, which is your, your cyan, magenta, yellow, and your key value, and then like hex color codes. So again, you can define the uh, background of the label and then that uh, font color on the front of it. Let's back up just a second, though. Yeah, so sure. the, the TLP... Um, the traffic light protocol, the, as you said, it's it was originally designed to place limitations on ser sharing sensitive data. You know, in in the case of a uh, you know some new vulnerability or something or some new attack, uh, the idea was you restrict who who's shared with so that it doesn't get out too soon. So you know, TLP Red was just the just the individual recipients that were receiving it they were not allowed to disseminate it you know even to other people in their own teams it was just to particular individuals then the TLP amber under version 1 as you said was to organizations and their clients and 
you know, that got a little ambiguous. And so I, one of the key things in, in this version two was to tighten that up so that they added that Amber plus strict meant you couldn't share it with clients only within your organization, but at least you could share it, you know, within your, like our CSO team, for example, here or similar teams at other organizations, the TLP green, you know, green go, you'd think that maybe that means you can share it with anyone. Well, that's not entirely true. It's still limited, but it's limited to within the community. And that's in, in general, uh, it, it, you know, for the kind of stuff that I, or, you know, that we deal with on a daily basis, that's the kind of the information security community. Okay. So we could share it, you know, pretty freely amongst ourselves, but we couldn't put it up on some public site that would, you know, beyond, go beyond the community. So then the TLP, what used to be white is now clear is there's no foreseeable risk of misuse of the information so it, we can you know share it with the public at large so yeah th for those who weren't familiar with what the the categories really stood for that's that's a, a real high level what the the categories are for and as uh, as david as you were pointing out the the biggest change is they changed that completely open category used to be called TLP white now TLP clear and then they added that to the amber they added the amber plus strict which said just the organization not its clients um, but in general it's still and until you get to TLP clear it's still a need to know kind of a thing so you know you don't you don't want to be spreading the information too far where that information might get to, you know, the attackers, for example, or might provide information for how attackers could um, exploit a vulnerability and that kind of thing. So that's that's where first was coming from when they developed this this protocol in the first place is for. They, you know, they want to encourage information sharing, but limit it so that it can't be used against us. Kind of like you're saying, too, and some of that's voluntary, right? So, I mean, there's not really, I mean, it kind of goes to the, you know, integrity and trust of the individuals you're disseminating the information to. And are they going to follow that? I mean, you know, most of the community is going to, right? But you never know if there's someone, you know, who's not going to hear that. And that's kind of the thing when I look at this and see this particular protocol is, you know, enforcement voluntary and, you know, it's, it's up to individuals to truly adhere to those uh, TLP categories or, you know, labels to, you know, follow that and basically adhere to that guidance. Right. And it's, yeah, but if somebody is consistently violating that, then you basically take them off the need to know list. You don't share it with them anymore right. if they're not going <laughs> to follow through and protect the information. No, right, right. Yeah. And I just, you know, kind of think too long the lines, like you're saying, but basically like, you know, the adoption of this, you know, you know, I'm sure, you know, CISA uses it, CERT uses it. We have probably a certain areas in our, some of our individuals use it, but I mean, as a whole, right. I think that's what, you know, trying to get to is a, a wider community, uh, you know, adoption of this per se, right. Um, where this is used because, you know, you have your full disclosure community. They're going to say, oh, wait a minute, we want full disclosure, which, you know, most things aren't ever full disclosure, right? I mean, you try to limit, as you said, certain bits of information is need to know, is restricted, and rightfully so. And then you have your restricted community or says, you know, you need to follow these guidelines. But again, you know, you always have the full disclosure folks who want everything disclosed, you know, as it comes about. I, I think that's where the big debate around this comes, is you've got the, the full disclosure folks who say, you know, get it out there as soon yeah. as you can um, in the uh, in the hopes that that will cause folks to patch more quickly and whatever. And then you've got the responsible disclosure types. And, you know, this is trying to put some more general guidelines so that we're operating in a similar fashion, um, you know, that in really sensitive cases that might you know, cause significant damage if word got out too soon, 
you know, you don't want to get it out too soon. You know, the full disclosure, even most of my f- friends that say they're for full disclosure, they're, they're, they're not for disclosure of things that are going to, you know, cause medical devices right. to, <laughs> yep. to, to break and kill people. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but the, yeah, so the, these guidelines are more along the lines of responsible disclosure, uh, yeah. you know, keep it tight when it's absolutely necessary, share it with the folks who need to know in order to protect their organizations, or, you know, their, or whatever. And, you know, as it becomes possible, then you widen out the disclosure and once things are fully patched and you let the world know. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, kind of like I mentioned that when I first, you know, we're discussing this is that, you know, I think it, it can be used, you know, it's kind of, you know, unique and that can be used for anyone, not just necessarily security, right? So you could put it on, you know, managers, sysadmins, responders, anyone could use this. So I think that's kind of one of the, I guess you could call it strengths of this, right? Or it's just good to have that. I mean, even if you don't, I mean, you could even use it for home use, right? But not anything, but it's good to have that, you know, a categorization of that. So, you know, like I say, just having that ability that this can be applied to a wide range of, uh, you know, individuals is, is pretty beneficial, really. So I applaud first for for doing the update, because uh, especially with that Amber, <clears throat> there, there there was always some ambiguity around that. So I I'm very glad to see that they've cleaned that up. And and again, by releasing the second version draws attention back to it so maybe we can get more people to adopt it for sharing information so yeah i this i was very glad to see the the release of version two right yeah and as you say maybe that was one of their underlying not the main reason but one of their underlying goals right just being five years out now they're bringing it back to bring in that adoption again or you know see if individuals and and more uh, people will adopt it and start using it again Yep. Not that they're not now, right? But I mean, just, you know, a wider adoption rate.